Hello, this is Mark Summers again from Summers Technical Services. We're going to be doing a little tutorial on creating configurations in our waveguide model. And uh, here's our waveguide. We've created a WR34 waveguide per the drawing. And we'd like to make configurations so that we can leverage our model for the first one and create configurations for all the other configurations. Let's go to our part here, waveguide part, and what we're looking to do is create some global variables for these A, B, C, and D variables, and then we'll be able to assign those in our design table we'll do later. So the three steps we'll be doing is creating the global variables, first step. Second step is assigning those global variables to the sketch dimensions, so they apply to the model. And then the third step will be to create the design table itself. So to create the global variables, again using these values from our table, the WR34, I want to enter the ABCD global parameters, global variables, and type in these numbers for them. So to get there, you just say tools, equations, and they're right here at the top. So I'll type in A, the first value is 0.34. B is 170, C is 420, whoops, C is 420, and D, whoops, D is 250. Get rid of this guy here. Okay, so now we have signed those global variables, but we haven't told we haven't told the model about them yet, so we have to go into our sketches and assign those things. So let's go into our first sketch here, edit sketch, and we just double click on these numbers and assign those global variables. So 42 is really C, so you hit the equal sign, it prompts for global variables, and then we'll choose C. And you get a little equation symbol there to let you know that it's signed to a global variable. So 34 ends up being A. So again, I'll hit the equal sign, global variables, A. 170 looks to be B. And the last one here, 250 is D. Equal sign, global variable, D. And we'll get out of the dimension, get out of the sketch. So our model hadn't changed, but now those dimensions are being driven by global variables. And if I go back to the equations tab, you can see these equations were automatically entered in the equations section based on what I just typed in. So I've got a couple other sketches I need to also fix. The uh, 3D sketch for the path, I need to change these radii to make them follow those parameters as well. Global variable, excuse me. So this first value is 0.71, but it's really going to be equal to 0.5 plus, and then my global variable for the width, which is C, put that in quotes, and then divide that by 2. That gives me that center path. You'll notice the number hadn't changed, but now it's driven by that global variable. And I need to do the same for this radius over here, except it's going to be equal to 0.5 plus, and this is going to be D divided by 2. So again, the number didn't change, but now it's driven by that global variable. And again, if I go tools, equations, I can see those equations down here, and I can edit them if I typed them in wrong. So now our model, again, still hasn't changed any, but we've created, we've uh, accomplished the first two steps of creating the global variables and then assigning those global variables to the sketch dimensions. Now we just need to create our design table. So we go to Configuration Manager tab, and we see we just have one configuration, the default. But if I say Insert Tables Design Table, I'll get a pop-up to do that. And generally, I just start with a blank one and type them in manually. 
So say OK. And in a minute, my little dialog box will pop up. And it's a little instance of Excel running. And so I just type these in manually. So the first instance, instance I'll call NRG 018-00-08-01. That's my base number. Then I'll add a dash WR42 to distinguish it from the other ones. Now what I'll do is I'm going to add a parameter for my global variable. The format's a little difficult, but we can get through it. You type in dollar sign value. I'm not sure if it's case sensitive or not. I don't think it is. To designate a global variable, and then you hit at symbol, and then your global variable We'll do A. You do another at sign, and then you type in the word equations. So that's just the format it uses to identify a global variable. And to make this thing look a little better, I want to change the format and rotate this guy around the alignment option. Make him line up vertically so it doesn't take up a bunch of space. So I want all four of these, so I'll just copy. Oops. I'll just copy that, and paste it over B, C, and D, so I don't make any typing errors. And I'll change that one to B. This one to C, and this one to D. So there we go. A, B, C, D. Now I need to add numbers for the WR42 waveguide. So again, I use numbers from the table here for WR42. I'll use A, B, C, D in this column here. And you have to type these in a little strangely also. You put a little single tick mark equals and then the number, which is point forty-two. And for B, it is 170. For C, it's 500. And then for D, it's 250. So let me just get out of here now and see if this is created correctly. And to get out of the design table, you just click off of it back into the model. And we'll go look at that table and report back that yes, it's successfully generated this configuration. So if I double click on it, it'll activate that configuration. Now I can go back into my design table and add the other configurations. Just right click on it, edit table, and your Excel spreadsheet will pop back up. And I say OK. So now I want to add other configurations, so I'll just copy this down. And change these to 34, 28, 22, 19. And now I want to go in and change these values to the values from the spreadsheet or the, uh, the uh, mill spec. So for WR34, A is 340, B 170, C is 420, and then D is 250. So you get the idea. I'm not going to type all these in now, but we'll just roll those down. Pretend like they're the right numbers. So once you get all the values in there, you've successfully created those other configurations. You can see them in the tree over here. So the values were correct. When I clicked on these configurations, it would bring up those particular configurations. And when you go back to the model, 
the current configuration is shown as the one displayed here. So in this case, it's W28. We go back to the configuration and change it to WR42. That's now the active one. If I go back to the model, WR42 is now the active model. So hopefully that was informative on creating configurations and part models. We'll follow up with another video doing the same thing for assembly configurations so we can make configurations for the waveguide part and the flange part. And then we'll pull those in to the assembly model and then do configurations for the different sets of assemblies. So until then, we'll talk to you later.